Hello and welcome to Birds of Geek episode 13. I'm Amy and with me we have Barry. Hey all. And Anthony. Hiya. Yes, we've been gone a long time, but I'm just going to blame 2020 as a rubbish year and leave it at that. But we're back and we're back reading books and making use of the Christmas holidays in the best way. So, Ant, do you want to start with your book? Uh, yeah, I can do. So I've been nostalgic, I think is the way to do it. And I've been watching on YouTube a series about 80s cartoons and toy lines and stuff. And in a retrospective on Defenders of the Earth, which I used to love, which was a cartoon following Flash Gordon, Mandrake the Magician, Lothar and the Phantom and their kids against Magna Merciless and co. There was mention of a graphic novel, well, a, it was a mini series, a comic mini series produced by Dynamite, I think in 2014, 2013, 2014, around that time, uh, which I vaguely remember. I think, B, I think I remember you mentioning this once, but it kind of it kind of went in, went went round a bit and popped out my head again. But it's called King's Watch, and I kind of immediately went out and bought it because I think uh, I think this year has made me more nostalgic than I ever normally was. So this is essentially, I'll read the blurb. So we've got Flash Gordon, the Phantom and Mandrake the Magician are together again for the first time. When strange phenomena fill the skies and all humanity shares the, night, the same nightmarish vision, three iconic heroes rush headlong into danger to save us all. While Playboy adventurer Flash Gordon uncovers an, a- an alien menace, the ghostly jungle champion known as the Phantom faces murderous creatures in the African wild. But it's only Mandrake, a stage performer in touch with the mystic realms who knows how these horrors are related and how they threaten to shatter the earth. Brought together through the efforts of reporter Dale Arden, the eccentric prof- Professor Zarkov and a man, man of action Lothar, the heroes must overcome the cult of the Cobra and their otherworldly allies. And as I say, this was a five issue mini series. It was written by Jeff Parker. The art is by Mark Lamming. It was coloured by Jordan Boyd and lettered by Simon Boland. And yeah, I mean, basically, this is it's kind of like it's well, it's a modern day pulp or a near future pulp, really, I, I would say, which is what the kind of the defense defense of the Earth cartoon was about. And it is about as good a take on that kind of property as it can. It's kind of it kind of honors it and kind of makes reference to it but at the same time it's its own thing and the phantom in this comic series is a very different thing he's kind of like um, reaching the end of his kind of tenure shall we say of being the phantom he's a bit grumpy he's a grizzled old veteran sort of thing lothar is very much he's kind of uh taking people out on the african plains and savannas on i would say hunting trips but they're not they're kind of like uh, they're more safaris because it's very much camera work but it's foot safaris and then you've got Flash Gordon, who's basically just a brash, cocky, know-it-all, public schoolboy kind of bloke with all the money. But he's actually quite likeable at the same time, despite being a bit of, a, bit of an arrogant so-and-so. And then Mandrake, yeah, he's basically um, a stage magician who, in the similar vein, in sort of my frame of reference to uh, Zatara and Zatanna in the Batman franchise, you know, they, they kind of perform tricks on stage that are, you know, modern day sort of magic but they also know the dark arts sort of thing and yeah it's just a it's a really good read i actually couldn't put it down when i started because it was part of it was kind of like i sort of wanted to read it issue by issue and have that almost that serialized sort of format to it because i think you know pulp especially lends itself really well to that form in comics um but once i'd started i couldn't really stop um so yeah i pretty much read it when one session with a with a break to go and make a cup of tea halfway through. The artwork is stum- stunning by Mark Lamming. The characters are always very very recognisable. They're very distinct from each other and they're very consistent. You know, sometimes even with the best artists, yeah, actually the faces in some pages it's kind of like, mm, is that the same dude? I'm not sure. But in this, you know, ev- everything is really consistent. The action's great. The plot is really nice. It's a nice taste take on the way that the alien threat will come through to earth and what ming is and how how ming because it's kind of a spoiler but ming the merciless is the otherworldly threat but it's 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 really nice in the fact of it that you don't really see ming until well over the halfway point um and he just becomes like the almost like the dark side threat sort of thing so he's more there in 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 purpose 
but then yeah things things don't go well for the heroes during the course of it until until the end when it all comes back together and then my favorite thing is the last page which um i'm not going to spoil here but i think it was a really good direction for them to to take the characters involved so yeah a stunning piece of work with some great artwork really nice story great dialogue and for me in particular as an 80s child very nostalgic so barry did you say you had read this before yeah so the more i because there's, there's there's been a few sort of um ones of these characters knocking about from dynamite so i wanted to hear what Anna had to say to sort of zero in and whether it was the same one and it, it definitely was and i um remember reading this years ago and same thing to Anne. I, well, although I kind of went into it a little bit like thinking this was not going to work. Um, and I didn't even, it sounds a bit stupid, but I didn't even realise it was effectively a comic version of Defenders of the Earth um, until I kind of got to like the second issue and I, suddenly it became a bit, I, suddenly was like, hang on a minute. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is this is just Defenders of the Earth, isn't it? But Anne's right. The way they did it, I think it could have it could have gone so wrong and it could have just felt like they've adapted a cartoon and it just could have just fallen apart. But it very much stands on its own and it feels like a pulp version of the Avengers where yes. you've effectively got these characters that are all kind of like the best of what they do and you bring and any one of them can hold their own in their own stories. But the, you know, the the adventure, the threat is so big that they've all had to sort of come together, which is essentially what you get with, that's what you got with the Avengers of the Marvel Universe. Um, And that's what they do here on a smaller scale in terms of like, they've only got sort of five five issues to work within. Um, I agree with that. The art, as I remember, it was was stunning. Um, It had this real, and it had a real pulp vibe to it. It was modern day pulp. That's what it was. Yeah. You know? And I can't remember the last page, but I do remember what happens afterwards in terms of, I don't want to say anything. And I have enjoyed some of what comes afterwards. I think it's the best way to say that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was great. And also they, they, I thought made some smart changes, like in the cartoon, even though I love it in the cartoon, the Phantom kind of had magical powers which he doesn't have he doesn't have in the comics or does he, he i can't he, remember no he, he doesn't in this he doesn't no, he sure. doesn't no he doesn't no no because i remember um in the in the cartoon he was a ghost of walks can call forth the power of 10 tigers and he could talk to beasts and stuff like that whereas they kind of shelved that for the, for the comic and i think it works that uh, i think it was a good choice that they've done it so yeah yeah no i absolutely second ant's recommendation it's it's a cracking read Cool. And it, it it does go in directions I wasn't expecting it to either, which mm. uh, which made it all the better for me because I'd, I'd say I went in almost cold to it and I wasn't expecting exactly how it played out. And yeah, it's I'm I'm looking forward to picking up some more of uh, Dynamite stuff with these characters. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure there was a follow up called King's Quest, which is what I was saying at the beginning. Uh, okay, I might have to look out for that. I've not seen that. Yeah. So I'll go next if that's all right. Fine by me. Hi. Right. So I've got back into single issues again. I've been watching a lot of TikTok and there is some funny comic book parody stuff on there. And it's made me want to get back into the Batman universe. So I've been rereading a lot of the Batman, uh, reading a lot of what's happening in Batman at the moment. But I'm not going to talk about that until a couple of arcs have finished. Instead, I'm going to talk about June uh, House Atreides. So I'm devastated that the new Dune film has been, ca- been shelved for the year because of all like them wanting it in the cinema and disagreeing with HBO about when it's going to get released and all of those sorts of things. So not HBO, Warner Brothers. So what, there's a couple of Dune things out. There's the first trade of the actual first book and then there's House of Atreides. And House of Atreides is a prequel book that was written by... Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson and I I know that people either love their stuff or hate it in the Dune universe but I really love House Atreides and this is a comic adaptation of that book so this is me trying to read out loud which never goes well so Dune House Atreides transports readers to the far future on the desert planet Arrakis where Pardo Kynes seeks 
its secrets. Meanwhile, a violent coup is planned by the son of Emperor Elrod. An eight-year-old slave, Duncan Idaho, seeks to escape his cruel masters, and a young man named Leto Atreides begins a fateful journey. These unlikely souls are drawn together first as renegades and then as something more as they discover their true fate to change the shape of history. So this happens not really far before June because Leto is Paul's dad, Pardo is Leia Kynes' dad and Idaho crosses over into two books. So it's kind of about, I think it's meant to be set about 20-ish years before June happens. And I've read the first three issues. So if we're just so it is written by Kevin J. Anderson and Brian Herbert. So they have done the trans, like the adaptation. Then the pencils are by Dev Pramanic, colours by Alex Gomez. I'm sorry, and I can't find who's doing the letters and all the other stuff. I, I hate how hard it is to find letters credits yeah letterers credits everything it is ridiculous so while i try and find the letterer i'm really enjoying it it is very very faithful to the initial book so it's lettered by a duke shire it's from boom studios isn't it yes it's boom yeah. studios i forget all the things i have to say <laughs> um, <laughs> it's very very faithful to the adaptation and what I like about it is each planet has a distinctive colour style, but not in an overly heavy handed way like Fenders on Netflix, because I found the lighting very heavy with the colour style. Yeah. But this feels a bit more organic in the fact that it's almost like the colour of the atmosphere has that reflective glow to it. So it does work beautifully. And I really enjoyed that. It's very much paid from book page into comic form. So if you've read the book and you don't love the book, then maybe just stick with the book. But if, you, if you're if you looking forward to the June movie and you want to find out about the history of some of the characters, I think this is a really good series. Only the first three issues are out. I don't know how many issues it's going to be. I reckon it's going to be about six to ten based on where they are by book three. My favourite story is involving Leto Atreides and what happens to him because you find out a lot about who he was before he married Jessica. Well, didn't marry Jessica, before he got together with Jessica and had Paul. And you learn a lot about his background, about how he built him as a character because I feel that it's something that's always hinted at in the actual June book, but they never really get into his story. And also, I like the Pardo Kynes thing because I love all of the Fremen backstory and the whole lay at Kynes and his important, well, Pardo learning about him and you kind of learn about where the mythology of like the Kynes comes from. But, so it's a really good like prequel if you want to know more about the different worlds and different factions in June. Um, the artwork's lovely the colors are spectacular in my opinion the colors make the artwork you know I think a different colorist probably wouldn't work but I like the fact that June Arrakis has almost like a grainy texture to the colors like there is sand everywhere um and Ixion is very very clean and bright so it's it's really enjoyable and it's something that I've really, really liked so far. How many issues are going to be? Because that's a hefty book, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know. I can't find where it says how many there's going to be. I think where they are based on the book, I reckon there's going to have to be about 10 issues really to cover it. Otherwise, they're going to squeeze some pretty big things because if there's only if it's only a six issue. um if it's only six issues they're going to have to squeeze a hell of a lot into the last three issues like a crazy amount so i reckon it's got to be 10 to 12 issues because really the first three issues just set up almost like where each of the characters are right i i thought those books were set a long time before i didn't realize they were like pretty much immediately before um for you so that's quite um interesting some, 
some are there's dune stuff that goes like thousands of years before dune but they're with the houses book so there's house carino house harkonnen house atreides and if i remember rightly house atreides is the closest to dune then it's house carino going back in time and house harkonnen further back in time if i remember correctly okay so they kind of like step back through i think so but i might be wrong which order they are but house atreides is the closest to what happens in June. That was a good guess, by the way. It's a 12-issue miniseries. Yes. Nice. It's um, got, it can't be done in six. You can't do it in six. I mean, for me, I haven't read any June. I haven't read any of the June books. I've tried a couple of times over the years and just, uh, just sort of struggled with it. One day I might go back to it. What, what I'd say, B, is go to the original source and play June 2 on oh, PC. <laughs> Uh, so don't bother with the books because they, they just ruin it. This is how my husband trolls me every single day. <laughs> um, I would recommend the audio book of June. Um, right. There is a really good, the one that's on Audible is a fantastic unabridged version. It's got a really nice cast to it. I think so, it's, I was going to say, I think I've heard a trailer for the Audible one. It's got like a, an actual different people doing voices and special effects and stuff isn't it yeah yeah there's there are several different people it's quite a few people that do it but there's so it's mainly narrated by scott brick but right. then a whole bunch of people who do the different voice all of cassidy you and morton and it's really really good in terms of like how it's broken down and there is sound effects to it and it so it was um 2006 it was released okay so it's quite, so it's quite old, old it's macmillan audio but it is by far my favorite way that i enjoy june and it's pretty much on loop constantly at night for me yeah so um i've just looked at the art for this and the art looks lovely it is it really is but i feel like the colors really make it pop yeah yes yeah yeah i'd agree with that i'm just looking at the opening shot on the first page of arrakis yeah and it's yeah it is nice and i think for me what's oh sorry i've just looked at the next page yep yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna check out this bad boy i think for me coming to this as someone who hasn't read the books yeah i mean i've seen the film i still don't quite understand what it was i was watching <laughs> um, no, that, no, that's, that's what happened that, in that that's, film that's, <laughs> that's a podcast for another day you know uh, i went to the cinema to see that as well and sting was in it and i was just like i don't know what's going on um, <laughs> and so i still feel like i haven't properly experienced the story to make my own mind up about it but i quite like going into a comic that way because at least then i haven't really got any preconceptions of yeah. what things should look like and how it should be and stuff like that so um yeah i quite like the sound of that yeah it is really good and it's it reminds me a lot of like Fallen Heroes and all of those sorts of things because this has got lots of different storylines that mm-hmm. I know how they're all connected because I've read the series. But I can imagine that if you ne- if you don't know much about it at all, you won't see how they all connect and how they all come together. And so it'd be quite exciting. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd definitely say check that out and then hopefully the new film will be out Could I, I, sorry i just want to do a shout out as well to the the designer of this book which i think is marie crapina because i was just looking at the 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 title page and it is beautiful it's a beautiful piece of design designers don't often get enough credits in comics sorry just wanted to drop that in it's lovely no 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 but no you all, you all should be reading it it is absolutely fantastic and it's just it's a nice true adaptation of a novel and i think it's a good gateway book for the film june or well i am reading the first graphic novel of the book june as well so hopefully i'll review that in a couple of months down the line barry what have you been reading right well for me comic wise this year i haven't actually been you know i've i've kind of really fallen off the the comic wagon and um it's only been recently i've sort of picked myself up dusted myself off and um started to like pick up some comics again and I've been reading two comics at the moment, actually, kind of on and off. 
One was, um, which I'll probably talk about more next episode. One's Lumberjanes, um, which I'm really oh, enjoying. I love Lumberjanes. Yeah. So I think if you like Lumberjanes, this might be up your, both your streets, really. So this is called uh, Giant Days, which is from um, Boom or Boombox. And it's uh, written by John Allison, art by uh, Lissa Treeman, uh, Max Sarin, uh, inks by Liz Fleming, letters by Jim Campbell. Um, and uh, I'm going to find the blurb. I don't know. I, well, I've, I've read three volumes. I'm on four, volume four at the moment. So I'll, I'll talk about volume one. So it is um, Susan, Esther and Daisy started at university three weeks ago and became fast friends. Now away from home for the first time, all three want to reinvent themselves. But in the face of hand wringing boys, personal experience, experimentation influenza mystery mold i can't pronounce that word uh and the willful <laughs> unwanted intrusion of academia they may be lucky to just make it to spring alive so this this volume collects the first four issues and i've got to say <laughs> the fact that i've read three volumes in a day it should tell you how much i i love this comic so i guess the best genre you put this in um, would be slice of life but i would it kind of reminds me of like spaced in some ways but not so heavily lean leaning on the sort of heavy geeky elements of space does that make sense yeah mm-hmm. so it it definitely feels so for someone who went to university it really does capture that it doesn't matter that it's centered around sort of three girls from my point of view it, it just encapsulates the the university experience, what it's like going away from home and, you know, um, only no, only meeting people for like a week and suddenly you're like your best friends forever and stuff. Like the guy that I met when I was at uni, I was in the house with five guys. I'd never left London before. And one of the guys in that house um, was my was best man at my wedding. So that should tell you something um, yeah. and obviously and i met uh, my wife at university and what's really weird about this is that uh so one of the characters is called susan and she's kind of quite tomboyish and stuff like that and her character is from northampton right <laughs> uh, and obviously my wife is called sue and we we both studied at northampton it wasn't even northampton uni then it was a uh, neen college and there's a one of the issues they they basically follow her back to uh, Northampton for it's over the Christmas break and they're worried about it. So her two friends, Esther and Daisy, go to Northampton to find her. And this John John Allison who wrote this. I don't know if he's from Northampton. I don't know if he knows someone from, but he knows Northampton. You could <laughs> some of the things he drew, you know, some of the um the locations and stuff. That I was just sitting there going, that's Northampton. I know that bit. Yeah. So for me. It, because it's obviously the university experience within the UK, it really kind of brought it home to me. The artwork is lovely. It's got a real, it's quite zany as well. It kind of reminds me a little bit of like Teen Titans in that way where sometimes things get really exaggerated to reflect the emotions and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, the dialogue is like razor sharp. It's just, yeah, you know, it, it's hard to get through a page and there isn't laughter coming out of my mouth when I was reading through it. It's just such fun. It's just, it was, it's that best way to say it. it's just a fun comic. And with the year that we've had, I, I, I can't think of a better comic to recommend. If you just want to have, just sit down with a cup of tea and read something that's going to put a smile on your face. And if you went to university kind of, recapture that university experience you know within a comic I just, yeah yeah it's because i think when you're at university where everything is and i guess that's why it's called giant days everything is big everything is world ending everything is is life altering it yeah. seems at the time anyway you know yeah so it's it's absolutely fantastic and i can't recommend it enough there's a there is a free preview as well available on the uh, on the website for it which uh, we'll put a, a link to in uh, the old show notes. Mm. And um, if you um, have Kindle Unlimited, you can pick up the. It's on the first three trades on Kindle Unlimited. 
because that's what I read. And then I went and bought the the full volumes. Cool. But yeah, so it's it sounds really good. It's I'll read it because it, you recommended it and it sounds good. But I don't know how much I'll relate to the university experience because I lived at home. So all of that stuff you were talking about with like best friends for life, I don't have any of that from uni. But I don't think that's my experience of it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But I don't I don't think you have to have gone to university to read it. I don't think it's that kind of a in the same yeah. way when you watch space, you don't have to have, you know, share the house with like three other people to get spaced. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? You just you just yeah. get spaced because of the their interactions with each other and the stuff they go through. I think yes, you do get there is something you do get if you've been to university because you cut some of the stuff that's going on. You're like, I remember that kind of stuff happening to me at uni, but you can totally read this and have and have never set foot in a uni. To be fair, it's nice to have a comic that's about British unis because a lot yeah. of the stuff you see is all American, which is such a different experience. Their colleges are just so different to what we do at our unis. Yeah. And and I think there's even like where I've just got to, they're they're looking for a house because and I'm saying this for people in America listening, but over here, like we unless it's changed now, but in most universities over here, the first year, you're either in halls of residence or you're bundled into a house with complete strangers, which is what happened to me. I didn't get into halls of residence. And then you do halls of residence normally for a, the first year and then what it's hoped by then is you've known you've gotten to know certain people made relationships and then you go off in your second year and you get a house you know you then get your shared house and stuff and I've just got to that bit where they're kind of trying to get a shared house and it's the same kind of thing happened I saw happen to other people where they'd left it late and they couldn't get housing and end up having to share people didn't necessarily want to and all this sort of stuff was going on so for me you can totally read this if you haven't done the university thing because it's just a sitcom in a lot of ways but again if you have there's a little bit more you can get from it as i said the arts it's just funny it's just a funny slice of life comic which i don't read enough of really so it, yeah it's, it's been really enjoyable plus this was spun out of a um he did a web comic done i think it's called scary go round which was which i want to check out because that's much more um sort of supernatural apparently and funny but one of the characters, I think it's Esther, is in, and this is sort of spun out of that. Right, okay. Cool. Um, but it's got Eisner's, it's, it's been, it's got Eisner's, it's been going, I think there's something stupid, like 14 volumes or something. Wow. So it's been going a while then. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, 2015, the first volume came out, so. 39 issues by the looks of it. Yeah. So far. That's cool. But, no, yeah. that does sound quite uh, quite interesting because it's there's a lot of. Um, I mean, this year has been quite, as you say, quite heavy. So having something light to just enjoy and just kind of like reminisce on. Yeah, it's just it's just really good, and it said it's really it's really funny, and it's about friendship, and I think that's kind of universal, regardless of you yeah. know the, what the setting is. Yeah, absolutely, and and if you know. If, if if you know if it's got that core and that humour, then like you say, it should appeal to pretty much anyone, really. Yeah. Going back to Amy, I think a lot of the I think the humour is in a similar vein to what I've read so far, anyway, of Lumberjanes. If that helps. Oh, that's yeah, that's cool because I like Lumberjanes a lot, and definitely maybe it'd be one for us to group review. Yes. Yeah, I'm up for that. I've read uh, over the last sort of week or so i think i've read the first two volumes of that so i'm I'm quite happy to do a group review on that yeah husband you need to read lumberjanes volume one please yeah i mean i've just added king's quest and the king collection to my amazon basket so <laughs> chuck lumberjanes in there as well yeah because i'm being as well as king's quest there's um there's a 496 page collection with like all the other stories done with those characters Oh right, yeah, so um, I have is, added that to my basket. <laughs> is that digital? Uh, I don't know. I've just literally searched for it on the Dynamite website and then uh, added it in because I like I want these physically. So oh, okay, but I'll I will let you know when I find yeah. out. Cool. Well, 
I guess we shall wrap it up there. Thanks everyone for joining us. Let us know if there's anything you would, would recommend for us to read. You can contact us on Twitter, on Facebook. How else, Barry? Twitter, Facebook. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. We don't have a specific email for Birds of Geek, but if you want to drop us an email, you can via the geeks at geeksyndicate.co.uk. If you want to support the show or any of the shows on the Geek Syndicate Network, you can. You can either buy us a virtual co- coffee, Kofi, coffee, virtual coffee via Ko-Fi, uh, or you can become a patron. Uh, both links will be in the show notes. Cool. And thank you, everyone. We will see you again at some point, hopefully sooner than 10 months' time. <laughs> yeah, let's hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think like setting, let's set expectations of more frequently than once every 10 months. OK, see you in six <laughs> months, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> or, or thereabouts. Yeah. Or thereabouts. <laughs> cool. Bye. Cheerio. Bye.